uh, want to note before we begin the agenda that there is going to be a public comment section inserted between item number three appointments and item number four new okay. we have somebody who's in the audience oh okay I guess wants to make here. a public comment oh, yes thank you uh item number one is to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from june 25th 2024 i will entertain the motion um i move that we approve the meeting minutes from june 25th that's written I will second. Uh, all Hello. Oh. Hi. Oh, I've got a comment on the minutes. Fred, oh, excellent. Nice. Okay, great. Then we better do a roll call then. Yep. Um, uh, uh, before the roll call, I've got one thing to add to the minutes. After okay. the, uh, in the appointment section, after the selection of Julia's Chair, it should be noted that Julie was at that point chairing the meeting. Okay. Yeah, okay. Was what? I'm sorry. That I at that point began to. Oh, chair okay. Chair. Got it. Thank you. I will make that correction. Okay. Then um, I will take. I withdraw the previous amendment. The previous motion. I move that we uh, approve the minutes with uh, the note added by Fred. Second. A uh, roll call vote, Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Julie? Aye. Second, to review and discuss vendor and payroll warrant. Is there any comment? No me. comment. No comment from me as well. One. Uh, appointments, review and possible vote on digital equity plan. Is this the item that had 30 pages and so yes. didn't print the entire? I need one copy just in case you guys want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I have it. Um, I have it down. Okay, okay perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Her is with us. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for Cog, Ted, Harvey, are you? I am here, yes. Hi there. Are you going to be making a presentation to us? Yeah, if you don't mind, it's pretty short just to go over some highlights and then um, we can chat for a few minutes afterwards. Um, okay. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. You might need to allow him access. You might need to, yeah, on your MP. Yeah. Sorry, say it again. Uh, you might have to wait a moment. Oh, I'm okay, to... sure. If you're going to, yeah, make co hosts. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You should be able to Try share. It now. Yep. Yeah. Looks good. All right. You all see that? Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. Great. Yes. Um. Good. Uh. It's it's very it's not long, so don't worry. Um. So I'm Ted Harvey. I'm with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Um. I'm the Economic Development Planner there. Um. We've been working on digital equity plans. Just some very quick background for everybody. I'm not sure where everybody's at with these um, on this meeting. Um, and so we've been doing, we've been working on these for over the past 12 months, give or take, um, for a number of towns in Franklin County, um, Waitley being one of them. Um, and uh, Nicole Krantz, who it works in our office, um, kind of was the lead on the Waitley one. Um, she can't be here tonight. So um, I am I am somewhat filling in, but I, we worked on them all together. So um, this is um, this is the meeting. So so we've gone through and I'll go through the process briefly um, of how we got here. Um, but this is basically now that the plan is is kind of in its final stages or its final form. Um, and I'll talk a little bit this at the end. Um, we we're looking well, it's it's up to the town. We're looking for the town to um to approve it before it heads over to the Mass Broadband Institute for their final approval. So just a quick um, overview of, of kind of how this all um, came about. Um, there was, um, it, you've probably heard of a, a number of funding sources and number of broadband related um, funding pools of money. One of these um, over the past 12 to 18 months was for um, these digital equity plans throughout the state. Um, so it was kind of a no cost to the town. They had to apply for the grant funding and then work with a consultant. Um, so that's what Waitley did. 
um, uh, FERCOG was one of the consultants. Um, so we've been working with the town over the past, like I said, uh, 12 months, give or take. Um, we also did this, um, it kind of corresponded with the, the comprehensive plan visioning process that was going on. So um, we kind of tag team some of the, those uh, meetings um, and, and that public outreach. Um, so there's some of the public outreach that was um, on there, uh, is there on the slide. Um, so this is the process. Um, I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but this is basically um, uh, how how we've been working on this. Um, basically, from the the statewide survey that was again for the entire state, we used some of that data for Waitley, um, all the way to the where we're at now, the final um, plan to the select board um, to talk about it here, um, and various um, things in between community meeting, focus group, etc. Um, so just briefly, again, I, I, I'm not sure exactly where everybody is on the whole, you know, where, where we're at with um, how much people know about the plan or digital equity or um, any of these pieces, but um, this is a, this is an ongoing effort by both the, at the federal level, but also at the state level through um, the Mass Broadband Institute. Um, and so um, just defining digital equity and kind of what this plan is looking at. Um, and I'll just read this. This is from the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, which is a, um, a, a nationwide um, nonprofit. Uh, it's a condition in which all individuals and communities have the information technology capacity needed for full participation in our society, democracy, and economy. And so the purpose of this plan was really to kind of look at, um, in this case, Waitley, the town of Waitley, and kind of where the town is at. Um, when it comes to digital equity and kind of where there um, are places that can be improved, but also where things are kind of going well. As, um, and then also um, a, an important thing that I should bring up is, like I said at the beginning, there is um, a, a good amount of money, and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end of this, um, funds that are available somewhat now, but also over the next couple of years um, that this plan kind of helps set Waitley up to to look at um, getting some of those funds to, to do some of this work. So it's not, the, the goal really is not for this just to be a plan that we just give it to you and you, nothing happens. Um, the goal is that there is actually hopefully some the um, actual concrete things that can be done over the next, you know, one to five years and going forward. Um, so digital equity, again, just kind of um, we're looking at connection, um, fast, affordable. We're looking at um, do people have adequate devices um, either in their homes or they have access to them, whether it's a library, senior center, um, through the COA, uh, what have you. And then digital literacy, can they actually use the what they the internet and their devices? And then the outline of the plan, um, I, I sounds like you've seen the plan, which is great. Um, this is the general outline for those um, who haven't been able to look at it yet. Uh, we introduction kind of um, talking about what digital equity is, existing conditions, um, kind of where the town is at, um, and then also where um, what what the needs are, and then the recommendations, um, which I will include in this presentation as well. So one of the things we were um, tasked to do um, by the MBI and and through this program is to um, have a digital equity vision statement um, for all the all our plans. So this is the Waitley um, one. Um, and I will read through it just so it's on public record. Our vision is for all residents in Waitley to be able to access affordable high-speed internet with the appropriate devices. Internet access, which includes cost, speed, devices, and knowledge is not a pr privilege for those who can afford it, but a right for all of our residents. The Waitley Digital Equity Plan will lay the groundwork for long-term investments so that our community may reach digital equity for all its residents. With this plan, the town will be well positioned to compete for broadband funds that may become available through federal, state, and private sector broadband infrastructure and digital equity funding opportunities. So kind of what I said earlier, um, but in a um, visioning statement. Um, so we also had the three kind of broad bucket goals um, that that uh, we worked with the town of, of developing, um, you know, these, these are broad, like I said, these are broad, but um, they encompass a lot of things. So fast, reliable connectivity, selection of service, um, kind, of, kind of having the um, opportunity for that competition, uh, and then digital resource navigation. And then this is, I'm not going to read through all of these, but this is all in the plan too, but I just wanted to give a summary of um, the recommendations. Um, so again, it goes by the three goals. And then within that, 
um, we've kind of determined some of the, a, a lot of these are kind of coming up from the town itself, but also kind of some best practices that we've seen from other communities that um, would likely be something of use um, in Waitley. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through all these, but I'll leave it up for just a second. Um, and I'm happy to share this. And again, it's also in the, th this exact, these exact um, boxes are in the plan itself, so. All right, so next steps in future funding. Um, so again, part of the purpose of this meeting um, is to is to really finalize. We've been working on this for a, a bit of time now. Um, so the the process is is less formal than some other processes. Um, I'm hoping for if if the board deems it okay, I'm hoping for the board to approve it, and then I will. Once the town approves it, I'll submit it to the um, the Mass Broadband Institute um, for their final approval. They've already looked at it. They've already gone through it. Um, they had some comments that we've incorporated in. So um, I my assumption is that they would approve it once it's approved by the town. Um, then kind of looking, you know, the next steps for the town itself, um, we taking those recommendations and those goals and then kind of keeping the vision in the back of our minds, we really want to the town and and you know we're here to help as well but the town really should start wants to start looking at formulation of the priorities and a lot of those priorities are kind of baked into those recommendations um so we have those there but um kind of looking at those and what are the most important things right now um and then discussion with other municipalities about what they're doing um their funding sources because a lot of this stuff um, especially on the digital literacy side, not everything, but a lot of it, um, you know, we can look at other towns and work together and um, you know, um, um, to, to put these um, processes in place. So, um, well, yeah, question. go ahead. As you said that we were be a, a, approving this, what does approval mean in this context? Like if we approve of this, does it mean that we agree with every priority that's in the way it's written or like, what does it really mean for us to approve it? Does that um, that's a great question, and and I I probably don't have the um the the solid answer for you only because um there's no there's nothing written in um the our contract with the MBI or kind of how the the um, grant was um just um there's no language saying exactly what it means to be approved so um it doesn't in my it sense it means to the MBI that's one um, thing it means. It means, sorry, move, it, it means you can move on to the next yes, step. Yes, yes. That's I, one thing it means. In that but sense, yes. We, by approving it, we wouldn't necessarily say we agree that those are the same priorities as we have. Because I, be, I mean, I read through the whole thing on Friday um, and looked it over again today, and I, that I think it's good information, and I'm mm -hmm. glad we, but um, I. Like which of those priorities really ought to be top is really not obvious to me. So it's not like we're we're saying that we uh, we agree with every single word. Correct. Yes, I but I would say that is true. Yes. The next step and this whole thing is to help us think yep. about our priorities, right? And yep. not this is setting our priorities that we're thinking about them, and it helps us get grants once we've sorted out. You know, what do you think we what we think we can go for? Which yes. I think Going to be a little, largely a discussion with Sylvie and uh, and Pete and correct. Uh, yep, and all of us. Okay, good. All right. Yep, so I I you... don't have anything to add to that. You summarized it perfectly. Um, okay. I, yeah, I think that yeah. is the way to go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It it gives us a framework for setting priorities. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's why I did want to put it here uh, on the priority section because it it's. You're right. There's no, um, we, there's no setup of like this is number. This is our number one goal, number two goal. So it's it's even though it's you know, one, two, three, um, I wouldn't read that um, as, you know, your your top priorities. Um, so- In fact, can I interrupt you? Sure, Second, go ahead. Under, under next steps, the second one is formulation of municipal priorities. Right, exactly. So I assume that that means once we approve this, then we get to formulate our own priorities. Yep, totally. That's exactly right. Um, and I do just want to point out uh, just on the on the other side here, this future funding, because that that you know it it is part of this. Um, it's an important thing to keep in mind when a you're looking at this as your framework, um, as I think Fred mentioned. Um, but 
and then when you start talking about your priorities, um, you know, kind of keeping an eye on as the funding comes forward. So I just wanted to mention a few and, and, you know, we, we try to get this information out too. And, you know, it's, it's always, um, so, so you'll probably be hearing from us about when this actually is available. So there's, there's, which you probably heard maybe through the grapevine about this bead B E A D, um, uh, challenge process. So attached to that right now, we're going through this, this process. Um, but there, there actually is funding part of that. And so the state is looking to use that funding, um, prime initially for, um, any areas that do not have service or can't connect or, or kind of the infrastructure piece of it. However, their goal also is once that part, once they've kind of tied all those loose ends up, they really want to use this funding also for, you know, digital equity um, uh, items. So that's something that piece of it probably won't come about until, you know, maybe next summer. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. And that's for the state. That's one hundred and forty plus million dollars um, in that particular program. Um, there's also a di digital equity capacity grant program um, that it's about $14 million um, that the state has. And I, my understanding is that they're still working out, um, uh, you know, how, how they're going to kind of distribute that out. But this plan kind of will help you once you get to that point and you're looking at your what, what's important and what your priorities. And then there's other ones that have come out recently and over the past year or so that my assumption will be down the road, there may be other ones that this plan will help you. Um, so I will, my contact, Nicole's contact, who I said did um, a lot of the work on this, um, but I'll stop sharing now. And if there are any other um, questions or comments. Questions or comments from the select board? No, I, I see no reason not to approve it. it. It commits us to nothing and sets us on the path. Yeah, I would, this might be, I, I hope I'm not making anybody feel too embarrassed, but, um, and I wish I were more surprised, but Waitley has misspelled at least three places <laughs> in this document. It's spelled correctly in a lot of places, so I guess I should have led with that. You spelled Waitley correctly most of the time, but there's at least three places where it's spelled with uh, ending with L-E-Y instead of E-L-Y. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I'll 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 make a note and we'll make those changes. Yeah, so I, I would not want to approve it without making those changes. Yep, duly noted. Any further discussion? I mm -hmm. entertain a motion to uh, approve. Okay. Uh, I move we approve the digital equity plan. Um, with spelling, I'll, I'll, with, with spelling, with technical corrections. The technical corrections. Yes, I'll second that. Uh, roll call vote. Fred. Yes. Alan. Okay. Aye. Aye. Well Great. said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Presentation and all the work you've done. You're welcome. Have a good rest of the night. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next item, Select Board Department Liaison Library. Uh, liaison, we've elected to... Yeah, we haven't, I don't think we've had a library liaison in the we past, but it's a good idea. They would like one, and oh, I see no reason not to. I think they, pro they probably want you. I'd no. be very happy to. <laughs> as, as I said to Peter earlier, I chat with Cindy all the time when I'm in there. I'd be very happy to be the oh, liaison, okay. unless somebody else feels that they'd like to volunteer. Well, sounds good to me. I'd like to nominate uh, Julie to be the library, the select board liaison to the library. I will right. second that. Uh, I'll take a vote. Fred? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Julie? Yes. All right. Oh, that was... I am now select board liaison to the library. Oh, yeah. And Here. now we have our oh so recently inserted public comment section. I'm going to say one thing and then Peter's going to say a couple things and then we'll ask you to speak. Perfect. I'll um, be brief. Okay, good. That was I your thought there. That's the major thing <laughs> that I was going to say was uh, we keep your comments to yeah. five minutes or less. Yeah, I've got my notes so we can just roll right through. And identify yourself and, sure. and your place of residence. Peter? And yeah, um. I, I know it's not, but the uh, purpose of public comment is for the public to be able to speak on items that aren't on the agenda. So, uh, but other than that. Yep. 
They want me to go ahead. Okay. Hi, everybody. So my name is Sandra Slesinski, S-L-E-S-I-N-S-K-I. Uh, I reside at River Road, down in Swaley. I'll talk to the officer a little bit before um, the meeting started. Every year I say I'm going to just speak my piece, and this year I, I finally decided to. I'm not a big fan of fireworks, illegal fireworks. And, um, I, I'll just read what it is. I'm, I'm realistic. We're never going to look at them, no matter what, mm -hmm. no matter how much you try. Um, also, I want to state up front, this is no criticism on the chief or his department at all. You know, even if you call them, they're great. They respond immediately, all the time. I think I called once on fire, which was a really long time ago. Um, but they can only respond if something's happening. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to head something off in the past. <clears throat> so let me read through and I'll point out my salient concerns. And um, I've referenced a whole bunch of uh, regulations and I can actually give you a copy of that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So just feel better if I speak my piece. So anyway, um, made it through another loud and disruptive 4th of July. I'm livestock. That happened. Mm. Um, Anyway, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, if there's any way the town can maybe you know, more proactive messages or whatever. Let's be proactive because by the time it happens, you know, the police, of course, are going to go, but that's a reactive. And we could have something damage wise before whatever. It's just part of this is stemming from decades of frustration with this. And it just seems to be getting worse. Mm -hmm. People are just growing more and more disrespectful. I do want to say in my area, within like the half mile, whatever radius, I finally got a great mix of neighbors. A lot of them hate fireworks too. So, but there are other things that we're going on. So anyway, um, I have to keep going. Uh, let's see. So we're talking about proactive measures. Um, I know there's uh, permitted displays are allowed and there's a place on the state website showing which permits are there, you know, by licensed people and, and whatever, professional people. And, you know, the Treehouse Brewery one was there. You know, there were a couple up in Greenfield recently. It's surprising how many are there. There's a lot listed there. Um, okay. So, like I said, I know you're not going to get rid of them. You know, I'm not trying to be a do-gooder. It's realistic. You're never going to get rid of fireworks ever in this state. Um, we're lucky they're, they're illegal as they are. Um, I said right now I'm in a great area, but in general it's all around it seems to be more and more um this year was kind of tough because of the dates and how it fell so we almost had like a full six full days of fireworks mm. like come on fourth of july get it over with just just be done with it. um so you can find people on that too so maybe you can make some money on it but so obviously there's going to be high decibel sounds occurring during the year it's the high decibel it's the booms that most people have a problem with. We kind of deal with the snap, crack, or pop of, you know, the standard fireworks. You know, I have a firearms license. Mm -hmm. The chief was here, chief could tell you, yeah, I remember you, you get it renewed every five five years or whatever. I, I don't know what going to the range or doing that. I don't have a problem with hunters in our many woods. I don't have a problem with the agriculturally allowed, you know, pyrotechnic sounds too, to help keep the crops good, keep the birds away from the crops. It's, it's part of it's disrespectful. It's this booming cannon shot. It bothers me. It bothers other people with PT, SD, and you saying that right. Fire safety, okay. Um, I was saying earlier, I just for the heck of it, I, I heard one, gee, it's kind of close. And I'm kind of seeing it like, seeing it through the trees. I said, I'm going to take a ride for the app. I'm going to check, it, check it out. And I thought for sure it was Bauer Farm or, you know, somebody right there on the corner. No, not there. And I'm riding and I'm riding and I'm riding down Long Plain and I'm riding. And I'm still not there. I'm like, where the heck is this coming from? Full blown, 50 feet from the road. I mean, booms. I mean, cannon shot booms. I wouldn't have even wanted to go try to go in there, and, if it affected me, to ask the person to stop. I'd be afraid I'd get hurt. It's like, come on, you know, did the guy ask the neighbors if it was okay for the officer? Nobody called on it, so they maybe thought it was a great thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why, you know, why are people doing that? And my problem with that, not that that particular <clears throat> instance affected me directly, but other people are going to say, hey, this person did it. I think I'm going to do it too. And what if one of those people are around me? What happens? I will certainly call the officer who will come as soon as they can. The livestock there. I'm not going to lock them in a 94 degree barn. Hmm. 
you know, why do I have to be, you know, I'm sure you're feeling my pain. It's like, why do I have to go out of my way to accommodate somebody that wants to blow something up? And again, we deal with this uh, snap, crackle, pop type, you know, it's not great, but it's there. But it's this other kind, it's like, come on, really? You know, um, it, it's a lot of disrespect there. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll ask you to move toward your wrap up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. That's it. I got this. Thank here. you for what you've said so far. Yeah, so uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, professional level. We talked about that. See, I kind of like went ahead of myself here. So, um, you know, pets, domestic animals. So I would, call, I would call the police if I needed to. But the problem is, is it just going to be like they're setting off three or four and they're done? Because I'm not going to call and the police get there and they're all done. You know, what are they going to do then? That has to be happening. Or is this going to go on and on and on? So my question, I guess, I mean, I could call dispatch if I needed to, if I felt I needed to. But um, if there are damages, worst case scenario, who would pay for the damages? You know, I got breeding stock with rare bloodlines that are worth over $20,000. The animal's gonna break their leg because somebody wants to blow off explosives just because. Like I said, there are sounds like that that are legal and okay, just it's acceptable and we know what it is, just steal with it. But I'm like, you know, just I just thought I'd come in and speak my piece. It should be a nice holiday to celebrate, but it's very, very stressful. For everybody, uh, don't know what you can do about it except call. And you know, if I think it's going to be such an issue, I'll call. But if it's in a direct neighborhood, if I see a party ramping up, who knows? That might mean fireworks. Um, I try to establish a good relationship with the neighbors. I feel comfortable enough if it was in a short radius to say, "Hey, you know, can you please not do that?" And they'll probably do it anyway. Who knows? But right around me you now, we have a fantastic mix of people. I don't even care about loud music at this point. It's like, let, let's be reasonable. But it just seems it's not the only town with problems. My mom's in Hatfield. You know, she has a lot of problems. But anyway, thank you. I just tried to summarize what it was. And I feel better because I, I talked to thank you for giving me more information. And that, that's it. I mean, I, I don't know what thank anybody you for could your do. Um, if there could be, like, you know, the, the how we get the full automated phone calls saying, hey, we have a town meeting or register your dog. Maybe ahead of time, there could be something to say, we're reminding you that fireworks are illegal. Um, you know, this affects veterans, affects blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Be, maybe you could say, be aware of any damages that have occurred. And, you know, if you're tagged, you're, you're going to be responsible for damages. Yeah. It's a big uh, fire safety thing, I think, around Boston. Yeah, they, 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 yeah we, we know all the reasons why they're on why they're illegal. Yeah, yeah. But you you were concentrating, you seem to want to talk about uh, proactive stop, yeah. Yeah. Would you be willing to write, again, it to be short, and you have to think about what subset of what you wrote yeah. there you'd want to include. But we put out a town newsletter every four months. There's mm -hmm. one that comes out middle of May, right before. Uh, that might be a place That'd be a good time to, to, catch, to yeah. put something in. Because I, uh, it, I mean, I don't do fireworks myself. Yeah. Um, but I do hear them yeah. um, uh, quite a bit. And I think um, I didn't think about the livestock aspect. I think a lot of people just may not know um, yeah, that, but that's that fine. affects I their you. livestock and veterans. And, uh, and, and not to condone doing it, but yeah. just to let people know that their neighbors can be affected. And I think, yeah. to me, yeah. that's one of the best ways to, sure. to, get, to get support. Right, it sounds like you do that in your little neighborhood then. Yeah, that folks are, people, are, we have a really nice mix of, of yeah. people now. And, you know, there's actually a guy a little further down. He's involved with the Marines and why he was setting off some fireworks. It was for a, a youngster that they knew and he, he was going through a really bad time. So they wanted to cheer yeah. the kid up. And, but uh, but, but they, they, they also knew that this is going to affect yeah. your, your lifestyle. I, I didn't think they knew. But then the wife came out. She was so apologetic. She was yeah. great. And she said, we don't want to be a bad neighbor. And I right. said, you know, and that kind of works. And that was hand. that was good. I said, thank you. you know? We really appreciate it. And I have, yeah. but everybody else knows. They think so the animals are. Cool. If you're willing to give me a, mm -hmm. a, a an email address, yeah. you can give it to me through Jessica or something. Yeah. I'll put you on the list of people who get a little heads up when the next group is coming out. Okay, you want and then you can that'd be great. I'd, I'd love to write, write something, something up, and it might not be for the the next one, September, of course. I work for the state. I work for UMass. I'm a safety officer. 
Yeah. So yeah, compliance, regulatory. I do a lot of training, proactive, a lot of writing. Okay. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. And I could even, um, I had it. Oh, I could give that to the administrative assistant. Yeah, you yes. give, yeah, whatever you want to say to Joyce, just email me and I'll just like a, yeah, sure. Yeah, a paragraph. Yeah, a paragraph like and and, and I'd love I to think do you're that. ready to uh, you know, like appeal to your neighbors. Yeah. To say, hey, look, this is this is hurting my animals. You know, it did did the guy with the big party go around and say, is there going to be a problem? If there was, would he have not done it? I I don't know. Well, but people that, might have done things like an example. But people might have found a different place to do it. People, you know, any yeah. number of other things. They, I would ship them down to the vacation yeah. and have you know, yeah. <laughs> I like I like the idea. Also, I don't know if it's something we'd have to discuss and make a decision on, but I do like the idea of a robocall, just a general information robocall, saying because yeah, I get those. I was this like, is what's happening. This we yeah. understand you want to celebrate. Yeah, uh, please do it responsibly. Yeah, be conscientious about where yeah. you're doing it and yeah. understand that it could. I'm trying to be realistic. I, I understand stuff, what we're all having. Yeah, yeah, veterans, etc. Yeah, it's to celebrate um, the veterans. Let's not let's terrorize, terrorize them. them. <laughs> we have to decide. Like, uh, we, discuss we, and we probably would have. I don't know if we have to vote on it, but we could probably okay. uh, put it on a an agenda upcoming and. You know, and I'm involved with a lot of forest associations. You know, I could, I will not mention Wayne specifically, but I can ask input on, you know, is there any like brief verbiage that they would like to go in there? And hey, we could be a trail center for other towns. Yeah. All right. We're Thank good. you. Thank you for listening. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting Thank homework. Yeah. No, that's, I would love to do that. And, and thank you for that input. And that's, you know, I know we try to educate and, you know, maybe people just don't know, but it's like, maybe I'm just so aware of it because I'm like a safety professional, yeah. you know, because if they don't know, they can't behave responsibly. Because yeah, we all want to is worthwhile. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great one. Appointment of a member to the Board of Assessors. Yeah. With the departure of Kathleen Grady, there is a vacancy on the board. Publicized the vacancy to solicit interest from community members who may want to serve. Two applications were received. The town administrator and uh, Fred Orlowski and the assistant assessor Stephen Casey interviewed and are recommending that Michael Hustet be appointed to the Board of Assessors. Is there any discussion or questions? Mm, what I can see, he'd be a great choice. Yeah, I think it sounds like a case where they had more than one um, good applicant. And yep. uh, I, I, I think I, I'd like us to work as hard as we possibly can to get the other applicant <laughs> on some other committee. On another committee, exactly. Right. Yes, like, you know, uh, yeah, or something that, that matches their, their likes and needs and uh, and skills. That would be really awesome. Yeah. I would entertain a motion to appoint. Uh, I'd move that we appoint Michael Hustin to the Board of Assessors. Second. All those dollars in favor. I have to take a roll call vote. Fred. Yes. Thank you, Joyce. Yes. Me, yes. Okay. Appointment of Planning Board and ZBA Administrative Assistant, Rebecca Danielson. Um, I actually don't have anything written about this. Pete, you I must have to this. Yeah, there was a follow-up letter. Um, sorry about that. But uh, no so we did we did a posting. We had two applicants apply for this uh, very part-time position that does support both of those uh, mm -hmm. uh, land use boards, regulatory boards. Uh, we, myself, and the chairs of both the CBA and the planning board held those interviews. The interviews also included a small word uh, test to verify abilities. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, we were very happy with uh, making a recommendation that Rebecca Danielson be appointed as the part-time administrative mm -hmm. assistant. Um, her work schedule will work perfectly for what's needed for the board. Um, she'll have the ability and she has the experience to be able to be very organized, which the board, both boards really need um, for this because there are so many different applications. Uh, advertising, noticing, yeah. keeping those. So um, okay, very excited for that. Um, uh, I would move we, um, oh, sorry, I should let you ask for 
I think yeah, I, I would entertain a motion to appoint. Uh, I move we uh, appoint Rebecca Danielson to the planning board slash CBA administrative assistant position. Well, second. second. Oh, and he'll second as well. Roll call. Yay. Fred. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Julie, yes. Yeah, right. and, and, and if Brand had a vote, he would say yes. I he think. would say yes yeah. too, but he says yay. Uh, next item, vacancy, animal and barn inspector. Pete, I believe you have something to say about this also. Yes. Um, so as you know, the ACO retired from their responsibility yeah. as of the end of June. Um, with that, the town has been working to get into the Franklin County, our uh, Franklin Regional Animal control program yes, yes. which yeah. is still in process i just learned oh. over the weekend it had not been finalized the board had not held and and accepted uh Whaley in um unfortunately we were not made aware of that until oh. just this weekend oh. 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 so i have reached out to the sheriff's office to find out when that meeting will be happening so that at least we get the animal control program covered uh, it still does leave us in yeah, okay. the need to have an animal and barn inspector because this program does not include inspectional services um so my question or request from the board is to confirm the process and to move forward with uh working with the personnel committee to develop that uh job description for this inspector or finalize that do the posting and then the interview and hiring process okay and this is, I assume, one of those positions that's more or less like a volunteer. It's a stipend or something, or is this a real job that we're going to? I think gonna... it's a stipend. I believe it's a stipend, yeah. so it would be a portion of what was previous. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to find a good animal inspector um, or a barn inspector. I imagine we have people in town with those talents, but i'm not really sure who we um threw around the thought of asking other towns yeah. um and uh, maybe grabbing somebody from an adjacent town oh and seeing if they would perhaps want to do it on a part-time do it on a part-time basis so this so. Uh, this that we don't have to fill it with the person from town we can appoint yeah. someone oh, else. No. right oh it could be anybody no okay yeah all right so you have you sort of have some leads on how you might find some ideas yeah, about yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. just need our approval yes. yeah to move forward to move yeah. that. and is that a voting approval or just a yup i think a yup right yeah i don't think we need to vote however you would yeah. <laughs> sounds good to me i yeah i i think yeah percent. and as this like board wrap on the committee would we go before the committee or would i go before the committee to bring forward the draft of the the job description because essentially we are separating what was a previous job into two a oh was yeah. being served by a program and now explicitly an inspector role yeah yeah i think probably with the personnel committee they're not accustomed to meeting in the summer but if uh we had the job description split in two yeah and uh, people understood this part's being taken care of uh, yeah. we have control program and we need so this thing could be a very short meeting yes. if people got them yeah. stuff in ahead of very time. specific. So that may be the proper route okay. to to take for that. Uh, and it wouldn't it need not be a long drawn out process either. No, probably just the hunt. Yeah, the hunt will take. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I believe inspections start in October. So I'm, yeah, yeah. So, so we, okay, so we have a little, so we have a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Not a, a little bit of time. Yeah, but it, we don't want to. You blink and it's going to be right. September, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fred, any questions or commentary? No. Okay. You have our yoga. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's our yoga. Thank you for the yeah. Yeah. Uh Next item, a request for a letter of support for House Bill H-832, an act relative to paint recycling. We do have that's the well, information uh, in our packages. We, yeah, we should be all over this. That's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Yep. If, we, if we could sign like three letters, I would sign three of them. Yeah. Could we break this into like five different letters <laughs> of support and sign them? And each one you want to as a yeah. Any 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 questions or concerns about uh forwarding a letter of support? No concerns whatsoever. Okay, same here. Yeah. All right. 
So do we need to vote on? I don't believe this is. Well, so if the board if, if we're going to submit something, yeah. Oh. Do you want where I finalize the draft and Julie acts as the chair to sign, or do all three of you want to sign? Oh, uh, well, we all seem I, enthusiastic. Let's all sign. We are, yeah, where are we at? Sure. We can certainly do that. Yep. If everybody. Yeah. So what I'll do is. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be back next Monday to sign. Okay. okay. I'll put together uh, a letter on your letterhead with the date of Monday, and that way we would get all three of your signatures over the next few days. Oh, the next few days. Okay. That's good. And this is not needed to vote, I'm assuming. It can't hurt to think of both. Oh, that really? you did, well, that I, you did I, vote. I move we sign a letter of support for this bill. I'll second that. All right. Fred, how do you yes. vote? Joyce. Aye. Aye. All set. Next item, request for letter of support for the center school grant, requesting um, letters from State Representative Blay and State Senator Marker. Uh, and there is an yeah template so, of the letter here. Right. I, I, this one right I think it was an oversight that it, we weren't asked this at our last meeting. Yeah. So we're, yes. We're, our letter is going to our reps and asking our reps to send support letters because we've already signed support letters. Yes. Right. And we will include your previous letter of support as reference. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I think this is also a no-brainer. And yes. I'm happy with the letter except for Waitley is spelled with two E's in the first sentence. Yeah, one yeah, one of the E's is not needed. Not like yeah. That. I will entertain a motion. Uh, I, I will Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I move that we uh, send this letter to our reps uh, with the one spelling correction. The letter of support for the town of Waitley, one stop growth application for the center school. I'll second. second. And Fred will too. Fred, how do you vote? Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me. Aye. And just a point I always of think I'm waiting clarification more. on that. Do you all three also want to sign that, or do you just want the chair? Oh, I'm fine with letting Julie take that. Um, yeah, it's that a that's fine. Okay. Okay, old business. Moving on to old business. Uh, Quan Quan sign review discussion and vote of wayfinding sign request, but apparently we we do not have additional information. Yeah, we are uh, we keep this still on. working to get the sign size requirement from District Two. We don't have that yet. Okay. Not responsive. Next item: ARPA remaining funds for consideration of future use. Pete, I think you had a yes. chart. Yes, I did. So um, there are there are seven items in this chart um, for you. Six of them have been completed, and so those are remaining funds. And then the fire department line item that was those funds were not utilized because the fire department instead was able to secure a grant to do yeah, that I actual project. Right. So the request is since these projects are done to close and move these remaining funds to unobligated, similar to what you've done in, in the past, uh, which then allows you to use the remainder of these unobligated to now consider future projects. Okay. Uh, I did include in the packet one request from the town clerk for yeah. the machines. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask that you hold off on voting on any commitment because the fire department, the fire chief specifically wants to put forward an additional request for improvements to the facility as a public safety improvement. Um, he doesn't have numbers yet, but intends to have the numbers and the explicit uh, projects mm -hmm. to for your next meeting. So oh, okay. while I would ask that you, if you want to, right. uh, close and unobligate these funds, just hold off on obligating. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I'm not in a hurry to obligate. Okay. The yep. funds, but you have to do it by the end of the year, by yes. the end of December. And you have to have contracts. And, and, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. obligated means there. And then I think there's still another year to spend it. Two, two years. Two years. Yep. To spend. Okay. The end of the 26th. Right. But, but we, we will have to authorize it in advance of the end of the year right. yes. to get the so contract in place. We should be yep. aiming for not the December 29th meeting. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. 
But yes, you maybe, do have time. Maybe something earlier. But you do have time, and I did want to make sure you were aware there is one outstanding one that is being put together. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, well, I move that we unobligate these funds as outlined. The, all these are just remainders of other things, so there's no reason to put them back. Second. All right. Fred, how do you vote? Aye. Joyce. Aye. Pink. Aye. Okay, next item, host community agreements. Pete, would you update us about the... Yes. Um, so based on the, the last select like, board meeting, uh, the board had uh, authorized me to, can, to move forward with at least starting discussions with all of these companies that are in their renewal process and utilize the model agreement. I have been in discussions with DMC, uh, Toro Verde, 3, and Green Jeans, who also is in the renewal process. All three are... Um, an agreement on using the model. All three have, or two of the three have already put together their version of the model with their uh, items listed. Uh, DMC is finalizing theirs. At that point, I will take all three, meet with Joyce and town council to review what we have received and what we feel the town should be including, because there is one area of allowance where a community can stipulate other costs based on the legislation and the CCC, those really are kind of confined to you noting that any licensing building permits, which are obvious, but it allows you to put those in there. Um, so mm. I have some model language that the town of Sunderland has successfully used. And so that's what I'm gonna be using, but we will mm. uh, verify with town council. And then once those are finalized, um, between those companies and myself, Joyce, and town council will then bring those to the board. My hope is that all three of those can be brought in August so that then those companies can move forward to finalize their renewals. Urban Grown, on the other hand, has not followed up with any of my requests. So I, I can't speak to where they are in their process other than this, as far as the CCC is concerned, they did submit for renewal, but they, so we have to go through the motions, but we can't do anything if we have nothing to work with. So at this point, a regrown, I have nothing to report on, but the other three we will be moving forward with. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item, Donahue dog update. Um, possible discussion of appeal status and sheltering of dog. Pete and I and one of the police officers, Levenow, Levenow, uh, Officer Levenow attended the hearing, uh, the appeal hearing this morning, and it was decided that we would reschedule. We um, oh. did not realize, did not have all of the information that we needed in order to actually be at the hearing, uh, which. Yeah, we had understood that they were going to review the tapes and review the previous testimony, but it's what's called a de novo. Oh, yes, yeah. Means as as if none of the previous testimony yeah. has happened and you need to have everybody there. So uh, Officer Libano was not uh, accepted as a substitute for the chief of police. And uh, we were advised that because we didn't have any of the folks who had showed up at the hearing or the second, mm -hmm. first or second hearing, that we were at a significant disadvantage. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was that's, advised that we would schedule. That's very different from what we had heard before. It is before. very different yeah. from what we had heard before. I will also let you know that we were told that because the decision we had made was written using yeah, the in information that we had uh, about what you can do when somebody violates an order. Uh, it, there's not a lot of information about what to do following a violation other than uh, seizing the dog. <clears throat> the clerk said, you understand that because this is written vague, vaguely, uh, the dog could be put down as soon as I, if I find that you're uh, deeming him a dangerous dog is valid. He can put it down immediately. You understand that. And I said, 
we are trying to avoid that if at all possible. Uh, so he suggested that we write it more clearly. However, I have downloaded the information about uh, nuisance or dangerous dogs and we did everything in the correct order. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to go to speak to town council and say, what, what can we WTF, do with this? Right? WTF, what can we do at this point? Um, mm. As I re really, I, that was, I, I feel like Brian was sweating the whole time because <laughs> he, just, he, he was. He really wanted to make sure we did every single bit yeah. of that, yeah, by yeah. the rules, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, he was really getting uh, following what town council had told had us. Had told him. There is also, um, I'll point out, and I can forward this if, to Pete if needed. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps that we could have taken, and we took one and two light, I would say, which is that we okay. required that the dog be humanely restrained and confined to the premises of the keeper of the dog. And you're um, referring to the original order. The original, the original, yeah. the ori original order. Um, the second part of that says that they shall be securely confined indoors or outdoors in a securely enclosed or locked pen or dog run area. Uh, number three says when removed from the premises of the person owning the dog, the dog shall be securely and humanely muzzled and restrained. Next one says the owner or keeper of the dog should provide proof of insurance in an amount not less than $100,000 ensuring the owner or keeper against any claim, loss, damage, or injury to persons. So I'm just putting out there the information that we we very carefully took portions of steps one and two. There, uh, we would have to go to a new hearing and take further steps. Right. Some of them don't make sense. That yeah. Steps to take if the dog is actually confined to their property. But I hear what you're saying. Right. That you're given, if, yeah, if our decision like a list is that, of options. yeah, there's a list of options. Yeah, and you can't yeah. really pick all of them. Right? Yeah, no. But if you can <laughs> pick one, we picked two that the dog be confined to the premises, which she was not able to do. Right. The second part of that is that we require that there be a fence. This this is all simply information. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That there. Right. Yeah, and we're going to speak to council and say. Yeah, WTF and what are next steps? And I think to the magistrate was giving us information, but kind of obviously give us direction. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it seemed after walking away that there might be some confusion in that Denise is appealing the uh, violation, not the original order, because right. that that window closed. She mm -hmm. lost that opportunity to right, appeal that. Yeah. And so yeah. the language that's in there, mm -hmm. if it is truly to look at the the order based on the violation, you are very limited as to what you can do. Mm -hmm. It's to remove the dog, to uh, deny the ability to license for five years. Which we've done. Um, and there was one there that I was okay, like, uh, but you did well, those. The, That's the all that owner or keeper shall immediately surrender licenses and tags, which um, they do not have. Yeah. We did have a discussion about the fact that the dog is unvaccinated. Yes. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's some... 5% of all rabies cases and demons come from dogs mm -hmm. that are unvaccinated. Some back and forth about whether the owner was even willing to vaccinate. Um, the magistrate did say to her, if you do not, I cannot ever return the dog yeah. to you. So even if the magistrate does find in her favor, he said he would not he release the dog back. until it is vaccinated. So it was made mm -hmm. clear to Ms. Donahue the severity and the need to vaccinate. And I think in the end, we did come to an agreement verbally that she was willing to it, but the magistrate advised that we get this in for a that she will approve it and fund that vaccination. And can I get a clarification? I, I'm not sure. The de novo hearing, is that for the initial here, last year's hearing or this second That's hearing? That's for this one, for the second one. <laughs> Just for the second one. 
the the appeal was for the second hearing. Yes. But it sounds like when you went up there, all they talked about was the first hearing. Yeah, and I feel that that that's, is confusing. That's yeah. the confusion. Right. That's why I was confused. Because he made it sound like based on the ambiguity of what your intentions were in the order. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about the order. No. We're talking about the violation. No, the ambiguity of our intentions in the order following the violation. You you think that's what yeah. he was referring yeah. to? Yeah, oh, I do. Okay. I do. Once the dog was seized. I like that, what then should happen? What the then dog. should happen? He was saying it was like, written it in an like ambiguity. Or that you can't do. Anything. We don't have any instruction about what else yeah. we can do. So I just mean he didn't know either. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah. Like, but in the end, I think, yeah, we're going to have to engage town council. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And even if Denise does get the dog vaccinated, we have made an order that she not be allowed to have a licensed dog yeah. for the next five years unless I, the appeal turns that over. unless the appeal turns that because that was over. part of your order of violation right that was the, that's the decision in the second yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so that could be overturned yeah. so yep we're so, moving more on to be, uh, more to be discovered mm -hmm. but it, it was rescheduled right. to july 30th so we'll be able to provide another update um we will need a select board member to attend because julie will be, away. Will be able to i will be able to run that select board meeting that night from vacation but i will not be able to attend that uh, yeah, yeah yeah um the third I, I should be able to be there <laughs> okay I, I know there's something on, yeah. on my calendar um Again, well, Fred, we'll plan on on you then if you'd like. Yeah, I I don't see anything that would keep me from being there. Okay. okay. All right, that's good. Any more questions or concerns on that item? Okay. Uh, no. Number six, select for liaison updates. Um, I have a quick one. Um, the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight. Um, we had a meeting uh, Saturday, last Saturday, and we're going to yeah, have another one. We're making progress on uh, basically coming up with a new draft agreement that it's probably going to take some time. Uh, we're, so we're at the stage where we think at the end of our next meeting, we'll have a draft to give to our town admins and get their input and then kind of start talking about what it is um, that we've changed from our current um, municipal agreement to uh, address some of the things we think we need to do moving forward. So we're making progress on that. And I'm thinking in the next few months, you'll hear more and uh, and it'll end up somewhere on our agenda in the fall. So. Brett? There was a SCEMS Board of Oversight meeting last week, which I was unable to attend and have not yet had a chance to review the tape. Uh, they did schedule another meeting for tonight, I know that the chief and myself and at least one other member couldn't attend, so likely will be rescheduled. It got rescheduled to the 18th. Okay. I believe. Saw that come through today. All right. Yeah, that, that was under discussion in emails this afternoon. Uh, no, I attended the most recent meeting of the water commissioners and are the water commissioners now? No, they're the water department. No, they're the water commissioners. They're commissioners. The department was disbanded. Things chug along as they have been chugging, and uh, there are no specific updates. Okay. Um, town administrator updates next. Yes, uh, a few. Um, building off of your update for the senior center, the feasibility study, it, oh, we yeah. had a kickoff meeting mm -hmm. today of the town administrators. Um, as well as Jennifer Ramlar, the director, and the consultant team, EDM Studio. Um, they will, EDM Studio will be doing an on-site, <clears throat> excuse me, tour of the three different uh, sites on July 30th, the morning of July 30th. So they'll go to all that's three my, sites. That's what I'm doing on July 30th. Yes, that's what you're committed. Uh, and then that after the three site visits, they will then go and meet with the senior center to talk about their programming space needs. And that way, EDM will be able to then put together a, a true picture of 
what it is the facility needs to be, how much space they need, how many types of rooms they need. Mm -hmm. And with that need, the VOO and whatnot can determine are these three spaces even viable mm -hmm. or do we need to change what we need, what we want from our program? So, yeah. Um, can you but, say what the three sites are? I was under the impression oh, there was yeah. only yeah. one. Uh, well, the three sites are there's a church in Deerfield that town of Deerfield's been slowly rehabbing. Yep. Um, there's the um, <laughs> building, it used to be the uh, that Oxford Press building oh, in yeah. Sunderland. Um, and there was an unnamed third site, but um, Pete brought up the idea that, well, if we have sort of a shell of a warehouse here that... Uh, 5,500 square feet. Um, that it, it would need significant renovation. You need to put windows in. Yeah, it's it's not habitable <laughs> yet. It's not really <laughs> habitable space right now, but... but it's located um, central. But it's, central. it's yeah. kind of, you know, if you had an empty shell of a building, what would you need to do? That's kind of what it would... Yeah. Uh, be and so if you got an old church, an old church that you have to rehab, that's one. If you have a modern building that you have to do some work on, so I think it's a nice kind of like everything else we're likely to ever come up with is somewhere in that triangle, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's a great addition. So, yeah. so we'll um, look at that. It also is like one from each town. That's yeah. kind of nice too. Yeah, <laughs> um, though though not required. Um, but it's, it, it doesn't mean we're moving the senior center into any of those places right. for sure. It right. means we're getting the information we need at it. to. Just a feasibility stuff. Yeah. yeah to, to and I believe, at least doing. to the discussion today, they, they needed to know what kind of budget. <clears throat> and I, Deerfield brought up, they thought that the budget would likely be somewhere between three and five million for a new facility. Uh, a facility. Sorry, right. I shouldn't say new. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, so just not not to say that's definitive because we won't know anything right. until we get further into this process. Mm -hmm. But so they're not going to propose a ten. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, a couple others. So, Com just for the general public, Comcast did send out a notice July first that there are some fee and service changes. That go into effect August first. They were um, some in or a number of increases. Uh, Burkog is completing or has completed the transition of their emergency communication to from the county owned system to a Commonwealth owned Com Comers system. I probably said the acronym wrong. Um, it's taken a number of years, but they are doing a celebration to commemorate that transition, and that is happening this Friday at. The South Deerfield Fire District Station from 2.30 to 4 o'clock, if anybody from the public or any uh, elected officials would like to attend. Um, highway Department, Doug Sco Dougie Scoville has retired. Uh, and so with that, Doug will stay on as a part-time um, to assist the department in order to train the new senior operator. Just want to make sure the board is aware of this transition. We will be interviewing internal candidates for a possible consideration for senior operator. Should one of those candidates move up to senior operator, then obviously we will have to post for the uh, vacated position. But um, just wanted you to know that there is this recent retirement and we are, are doing some transitions. And then finally, uh, you can tell the HVAC as far as we can we see now has finally been fixed. Um, we believe that Jamrock has been able to identify the system issues that were going on. Um, so we are, we've had what, six days of it operating consecutively. Uh -huh. So um, good news. Yeah, yeah great. that is good news. Yeah. Especially for committees that want to use it at night because by um, three o'clock in the afternoon, it's still being well, it's well, it's well, it's well, it's yeah. It's a sauna. It's yeah, it's a very yeah. humid sauna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to be in the sauna. Yeah. yeah. That's, what we, that's what, yeah. Can we out? Yeah, but you, you have the healthy glow. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a sweat. It's a sweat. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> we appreciate that. Thank you, Pete. Uh, any items not anticipated? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I will uh, consider a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Fred, how do you vote? Yes. Joyce. Aye. Me. Aye. This meeting is now adjourned. Great. <laughs>